everybody, um, and thanks to Alex for inviting us to share some of what we've done around Turnitin. Um, so just by way of context before Chris sort of demo some of this for you. So we shifted our mode of uh, feedback last year uh, for a number of reasons. We moved away from a sort of, you know, assign a numerical mark and give a paragraph of feedback to uh, this model that, that Chris has had a demo for you, which uses Turnitin to um, mark using a rubric, uh, as well as quick marks. Um, the rationale for this, there's many reasons. Scale is a big one. So staff workload, um, LSE 100 has around 1,850 students. That's 1,850 pieces of individual assessment that need to be marked. Uh, we have a team of 10 people marking that uh, quantity of assessments. So you can imagine the scale question is a big one for us. Related to the scale question is the consistency. So we are a multidisciplinary team who come from a range of different social science backgrounds. For many of our um, fellows who teach on the course with us, the content that we are teaching is relatively new and relatively outside their area of expertise. So they may be used to marking assignments in their discipline, and they may be very unfamiliar with marking assessments outside of their discipline. And so consistency of feedback in terms of quality was also a big um, aim for us in this shift. And then, of course, there are the benefits for students, of which we think there are many. Two of the big ones there are around comparison, which I mentioned earlier. So this idea of using a rubric, students can see where they could have done better, how to achieve the next sort of level up from where they achieved. Um, and I think also the fact that the quick mark process allows us to combine sort of feedback and feed forward techniques. So we're feeding back on the work that students have produced, but we're also feeding forward. We're often signposting, as you'll see, to resources around the school. So we're signposting, we're linking to things in the library, to LSE Life, to DSL, etc. So that's something that the quick marks allows us to do very easily and efficiently. Um, I, I think just in terms of sort of our testing process and shifting for this, we looked at Gradescope, um, we looked at Moodle itself, so the Moodle marking platform, and we looked at Turnitin. And so we ended up using Turnitin for sort of several reasons that I think Chris will point out to you sort of as he goes through um, some of the features. So I'll hand over, and Chris is gonna demo this for you. Thanks, Jillian. So we have two components to this model, one of which is a rubric, which is performing the grading function, and the other of which is quick marks, which are doing the feedback function primarily. You're also getting feedback via the rubric as well on top of the specific quick mark feedback that's going on. So on the right hand side here you see our rubric. We can just quickly assign a mark on each of our criteria to a student using our rubric and uh, turn it in conveniently will show you exactly what that rubric item looks like when you select it. So you can very uh, quickly check that you're assigning an appropriate grade calculates an overall grade based on the weightings that we've assigned to each of these criteria, and then I can just hit apply to grade, and that will be fed back into the Moodle assignment uh, interface. You can have any number of criteria you want here. Uh, you can also have any level of granularity when it comes to how many different potential marks you could award here. <coughs> if you want to do things out of five, out of 10, out of 20, and so on, you can do all of this. You can also assign different weightings to each of those criteria according to you know, the, the needs of your course. We've tried to keep this fairly consistent for students with four criteria which are equally weighted, so they're worth 25% each. When students actually see this, they uh, look at something that's a little bit more detailed. I apologize if you can't see this one online, I'll put it in a separate window. Uh, but this looks a little bit like this. They can see all of the different rubric criteria and they get the one that they've been allocated, highlighted, so they can easily see what's above that. You can also mark through this by clicking the relevant uh, rubric items. Second element then is quick marks. So we're using uh, quite a, a systematic approach to developing quick marks and using these. You can see the quick marks throughout these papers uh, that we've sort of dragged and dropped on. This is very easy to use. You develop a quick mark that you want to use, you know the point where it might be relevant, and you can just drag and drop it onto the, uh, the text to give a, that piece of feedback at a specific point, wherever is relevant. Students then click on this when they're viewing their feedback, and they can see exactly what we've had to say about that point. 
So this is really good for when you're giving the same piece of feedback repeatedly and where you want to have a more detailed version of what you would otherwise take a lot of time typing, and in particular where maybe there's uh, things that you want to <laughs> signpost students towards. A few things you can do with this. Uh, in particular, I want to highlight that you don't always have to give exactly the same piece of feedback if you're using a quick mark. So for instance, in uh, this case, I've added a further comment on top of uh, the comment that comes through the quick mark, so a bit of customization. So you could have a quick mark that refers to what the student's uh, work demonstrates, and then a bit more specific context for them that's been added on here. And also, as you see here, highlight a piece of text and add a quick mark to that so it's very clear to students exactly where that quick mark refers to. This uh, approach, as we've used it, requires quite a bit of administrative setup at the start. So we need to develop a bank of comments that we're routinely using. Many of us already have these. And then build this in via, uh, via the Turnitin interface. However, you can also compile this on the fly as well. So if I was to add a new comment, uh, comment and decide that I like this and I'm going to use it a lot, which would be a mistake, <laughs> I can just hit convert to quick mark, um, save that down, and then that's going to appear from now on in my set, which is why I've got loads. Uh, there it is, and I can keep adding that. What you can't do, unfortunately, with this is go back and then change all of the comments you've previously added. So if you make a change to uh, a comment that you've already left on a previous paper, it won't then uh, retrospectively change that. So that's something to know. So you can build up your comment bank as you go with commonly used pieces of feedback. One of the things that's really useful for us, having quite a large teaching team, and I'm sure for many of you as well, is the ability to then share this set of quick marks amongst the members of the marking team. So if you want everyone to be using the same sets of quick marks, or you've just developed a really useful batch, and you think it could be valuable to markers within your team, you can go to this little cog icon here, uh, select your set of quick marks and hit export set. So you can then send the set of quick marks that you've exported to anyone you like. They can upload that within their own grading interface and you can all then be working on that same set. They can customize that on their own end, you know, change some of the text along the way if they wish to do so. You modify these quick marks along the way. Uh, so that they, it can be more in their voice, and that won't then impact the other markers who are using that same set, so it's just locally uh, attached to their account. One thing to note is that, unfortunately, this approach can't be used for group projects. The way Turnitin integrates with Moodle doesn't allow for students in groups to see feedback that's been given on an assignment that's been uploaded to a group project. So if that's something that you're, uh, you're using, group work, uh, you won't be able to, unfortunately, take advantage of this. We did learn this the hard way, yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> by using it for our project. Which does head off uh, maybe Lee's question uh, would be, can we then export uh, this set of feedback? And we can here. So you can export this as a PDF that you could then send to students, which we then had to do when uh, that wasn't an option. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take questions at the end. Was there anything you wanted to add? No, no that's great. Brilliant. Thanks, guys.